So I think kind of how this game is going to go, Andrew, Tennessee is a fast and aggressive football team. It's going to come out. It's probably going to, you know, score a couple early. But here's the thing. I mean, you know, especially with that tempo and just with being a good football team, sure, it's not it's not unexpected that Tennessee will come out and score quickly. It's it's how South Carolina responds to that because where Tennessee was so bad a season ago was in the second quarter. This year, Tennessee's been so good in the second quarter. So you might jump out to a, a quick touchdown or two touchdowns. But then Tennessee buries teams in the second quarter. And so how does South Carolina respond? Much like what Georgia did to Tennessee. Now, they scored once in the second quarter. Georgia kind of buried Tennessee in the first quarter. But um, Tennessee puts games away early. And so I'm expecting a little bit of that same tune. Um, I do think there's a lot to play for for South Carolina. We're 5-2 and at one point. Um, Have two of the best teams, two of the top 10 teams in the country. You know, to finish off the regular season, it is senior day. Um, I can relate in terms of a lot. There's there's some good players that stuck through some bad times, and this is their time to to be honored. I mean, you know, there, there, there's a lot of players like that still on the roster for Tennessee right now who are six years. Um, so I get that. So I think that, you know, I don't envision this being an absolute butt whooping like, you know, Tennessee over Missouri, but I do see Tennessee coming out, scoring early, um, just because, quite frankly, it's a better football team this year. Um, and, and I think uh, with with, uh, with the quarterback play of Hendon Hooker, and and Jalen Hyde as well. It's just I think it's going to be a little bit too much, especially for two of those true freshman defensive backs that you were mentioning. So I think Tennessee comes out early and often, um, hits South Carolina and puts it away. And I'll say the final score somewhere around oh fifty five to twenty eight. Fifty five to twenty eight. I think Tennessee will win. And I know again that is a convincing win, but hey, at least it's not you know sixty six to twenty four like it was last week. Right. Well, for South Carolina, obviously, there's no question. You got to have a lot go your way in this game. I mean, you're going to need to have both sides of the ball play a near perfect game. You're going to need to have probably some turnovers play a role in this contest, which with Hen and Hooker, you do not see that happen very often. You're going to need to have Beamer ball play a role, which again, I know people are going to laugh at that, but South Carolina legitimately has made a lot of scoring drives they have, they have propelled a lot of block punts a lot of really good special teams play into some touchdowns this season so South Carolina is going to need all of that to play a factor in this contest to make it competitive the problem is you're facing another matchup nightmare with Tennessee I talked about last week with Florida Florida's run game is one of the best in the country and South Carolina's rush defense subsequently is one of the worst in the SEC this week Tennessee, one of the best teams in the country still, I think, in terms of getting off to really hot starts and seemingly pulling away in the second quarter. What is South Carolina bad at? Getting off to good starts offensively. So the thing South Carolina, and Eric, you alluded to this, um, the thing South Carolina needs to do in this game, you cannot let this game get away from you early because if you do, the air in williams Bryce, williams Bryce can be a raucous crowd. It's one of the most underrated home environments in all of college football, bar none. But if the opponent gets out to an early lead, like say 14, 17, 21 points, with everything that's happened with this team recently, the fans' energy will be zilch. It will be gone. You'll risk having fans leaving the stadium at halftime because, quite frankly, they are fed up with a few certain aspects of how this season has played out for this team. So, South Carolina, I want to say that they're going to put up a fight. I want to say that Josh Vance is going to have over 100 receiving yards. Zach Payton's going to have three or four sacks. They deserve that with everything they have been through. But you cannot let emotions dictate your thought with this game. And so I do think this is going to be a blowout. I think that Tennessee is going to put some style points on the board at the end because, quite frankly, they need to. They have yeah. to do it to show the committee what they are doing on the field, to make the score look good. And I don't think that's going to be an offense to South Carolina, but you know, it's just what they have to do with what they're fighting for right now. What is South Carolina fighting for? Are you fighting for your pride? Are you fighting for a better bowl game than, say, Birmingham or Shreveport? What is it you're fighting for? They're going to have to figure that out. But I just don't think it's going to be enough. I have the final score being Tennessee 59, South Carolina 17. I think that Tennessee more than covers that 22-point spread. And I do think that it will be over the 66.5 points that was set by our friends over at Battle Line. So, again, South Carolina fans, I want to say this is going to be close. But from a matchup standpoint, this just is not going to bode well for the Gamecocks in my eyes. If I could recommend anything, I would say take that over because if if Tennessee's proven anything, 
I mean, it can it can go for a 50 burger at any point in time offensively, and boy, it can surely almost lose you a football game by letting people come back in with you know some late touchdowns, you know, like Florida and, and Pittsburgh and whatnot. So um, I do want to ask you one thing. I know I know we're towards the end here, but talk a little bit about Beamer Ball. Um special teams, big time emphasis. I know you got on the board with special teams uh, a week ago. Last year, a trick play. I know this wasn't special teams, but Beamer tried a trick play, which would in my opinion, was just a horrible, horrible decision uh, within the 10-yard line against Tennessee, and it backfired. South Carolina will need to steal possessions uh, to try to stay in this one. And so I think you can do that on special teams or down up some trickeration on offense. What have you seen so far from South Carolina, obviously, with last week included? Well, I think that South Carolina, in terms of trick plays, they're not going to be a team that's going to throw out, like, say, multiple in a game, but they're going to pick their spots. So let's say, you know, hypothetically speaking, if Tennessee goes up 17 to three to start the game, it's the second quarter. South Carolina just went three and out on offense, and they feel the momentum quickly slipping away. Coach Beamer's not going to be afraid to call a trick play out right then and there. Pete Lembo, he is not your prototypical special teams coordinator. There's a lot of special teams coordinators out there that have probably less than a dozen plays for each unit of the special teams uh, portion of the team. Pete Lembo's got stacks of plays that he dives into, and they study the film of their opponents each and every week, and they try to pick their spots based on where they're positioned on the field and the kind of look that the opposing team gives them. So I certainly see your point in where South Carolina could definitely try one or two trick plays, and they might need that in this game. And of course, you know, South Carolina has again scored multiple touchdowns on on block punts. They have scored a kickoff return for a touchdown. And you're going to again need a score like that in this contest. So I think you could see a little bit of both if things go well for South Carolina. But again, you know, that's banking on the fact that Tennessee is going to have to punt more than a couple of times in this game. So that part might be negated to a certain degree. But yes, in terms of trick plays, um, it's probably a good bet that you'll see one or two from South Carolina's end on Saturday night. And, and Tennessee's punt team has been so, so shaky this year. So ha- protecting Paxson Brooks, Paxson Brooks, not shanking a punt, getting it off. It's going to be really critical in this game. 